now we are going to talk about the hemophilus influenza pneumonia we have already talked about our streptococcus pneumonia pneumonia okay i mean the pneumonia which is caused by the pneumococcus or the streptococcus pneumonia now it's turn of the hemophilus influenza which can also cause this lower pneumonia uh, and uh, yeah so hemophilus influenza is also called as the pfeiffer's bacilli is also called as the pfeiffer's bacilli now there are some important typing of the hemophilus influenza that one should must know so hemophilus influenza can be classified into the typeable strains and the non typeable strains so the typeable uh, the, the basis behind this uh, classification of typeable and the non typeable strains is the bacterial capsule if the capsule is present that will be a typeable strain of the hemophilus influenza and if the bacterial capsule is absent that will be a non typeable strain of the bacteria if it is typeable strain then the classification is done from a to f a to f now the most uh, pathogenic out of uh, all uh, you know uh, hemophilus influenza strains but a uh, serotype b serotype b is the most pathogenic is the most pathogenic after that the non typeable strains are most endo uh, i mean pathogenic and after that the other typeable strains are most pathogenic so this is the sequence in which the pathogenicity decreases the most pathogenic uh, pathogenic uh, pathogenic is the hib and then uh, followed by the non typeable strains followed by the other typeable strains that is a c d e and f okay now uh, one question may be asked uh, that is a very uh, peculiar question uh, because uh, of the peculiar finding in the hib capsule that is the uh, what is the capsule of hib made up of so that capsule of hib is made up of polyribosyl ribitol phosphate prp please remember this finding it's a uh, mcq question so the hib capsule is made up of the polyribosyl ribitol phosphate now coming to the lab diagnosis part of the as influenza so the lab diagnosis part we have to first collect the specimen now here also uh, there has been a symptom of pneumonia that means again lung infection so we'll be going with the collection of this specimen which is concerned with the lung so the specimen that will be collected is blood and uh, i mean that is the sputum and blood can also be collected now uh, some important point about that specimen is that the specimen should not be refrigerated by because the hemophilus influenza is a cold sensitive bacteria that means if you are going to refrigerate the uh, specimen that means the hemophilus influenza will die in the specimen and uh, the findings in the lab will be falsely negative uh, and that will you know uh, deviate our the co uh, deviate our course of treatment for that particular patient so uh, that's why uh, we should not refrigerate the specimen if uh, if there is suspicion of the h influenza infection okay it should be directly transported to the laboratory and examined as quickly as possible next is the direct microscopy so in the direct microscopy we when we prepare a graph stain and see it under the microscope we see that there are pleomorphic gram negative coccobacilli pleomorphic gram negative coccobacilli please remember whole name of the i mean whole morphology of the bacteria it is pleomorphic gram negative coccobacilli means it does not have a particular shape it appears as cocci it appears as bacilli uh, uh, uh as you know uh, so it uh, it is a it has such a shape that it cannot be differentiated as either cocci or bacilli so it is called as coco bacilli now coming to the culture so uh h influenza is also a fastidious bacteria it's also a cool juice pneumonia bacteria so th that's why uh, it also needs some uh, special uh, culture media increased media and there are two factors which are very specific for the hemophilus influenza okay those two factors are very important for growth of the hemophilus influenza on the 
culture media those are the factor 10 and factor 5 the factor 10 is also called as hemine and factor 5 is also called as the nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide that is nad now that factor 10 or the hemine is present freely in the blood that is present in the blood plasma but the factor 5 is present only inside the rbc and one very important very peculiar finding is that this factor 5 is also produced by staph aureus okay so that is a very important finding and we will utilize this finding in diagnosing uh, or in uh, getting a very important phenomenon with the at influenza with the help of this staph aureus bacteria okay next is the enriched media so the enriched media uh, that is used are the blood agar chocolate agar and the blood agar with s aureus streak so on the blood agar there is scanty growth why because there is only factor 10 not the factor 5 in the blood agar the rbc's are not broken so factor 5 are not released in the uh, media so that's why uh, there is presence of the factor 10 but the uh, factor 5 is virtually absent so that's why there is scanty growth but on the chocolate agar the rbc's are broken that means there is uh, factor 5 also and factor 10 also available on the media so there will be good growth plus when there is blood agar with s aureus streak then also the uh, factor 10 will be present in blood plasma and the s aureus streak will produce the factor 5 so that means uh, on this blood agar with s aureus streak also there will be good growth of the hemophilus influenza and there is a phenomenal scene uh, on the blood agar with staph aureus streak that is called as uh, satellitism satellitism we'll see uh, what is satellitism after this so let's see what is satellitism so satellitism is uh, this this is the satellitism this is the satellitism see here when we have make a streak of the staph aureus in the center this is the streak of the staph aureus then the colonies of h influenzae are these okay so the colonies are decreasing in size from the streak line okay the colonies uh, near the uh, streak of staph aureus are larger see here this is the larger colony but the colony which are away from the uh, the colony which is away from the uh, streak of the staph aureus that is smaller this phenomenon is called as the satellitism okay this phenomenon is called as the satellitism now coming to the special media which is used for the hemophilus influenzae those are the just remember the name for these all uh, special medias that is the fields agar and the lamenthal's agar okay and these are incubated at 37 degrees centigrade for 48 hours when we do the culture smear then the smear is produced on glass slide and it is stained with the gram stain and it is seen under microscope it reveals pleomorphic gram negative coccobacilli as i have already mentioned they reveal the shape of pleomorphic gram negative coccobacilli then also we have the biochemical test for the diagnosis of the bacteria that's influenza bacteria so the biochemical test for the h influenza bacteria is the disc test for the differentiation between the different species of h influenza how can we do that depending on the dependence on factor 10 or factor 5 we can differentiate between different species of the h influenza or the strains of the h influenza okay so uh, the specimen is inoculated onto a medium lacking the factor 10 and factor 5 now the discs of factor 10 and factor 5 and factor 5 and 10 are placed on the culture media and then it is incubated at 37 degrees centigrade okay. then it is integrated on the 37 degrees centigrade so suppose this is the culture media okay we have uh, inoculated uh, the uh, you know uh, we inoculated the uh, specimen okay of the uh, h influenza uh, over this culture media and then we put 
the disk this is factor 10 disk this is factor 5 disk okay this is factor 5 disk and this is factor 5 10 disk okay so three disks are placed over this culture media and they they that this whole uh, system is uh, incubated at 37 degree centigrade then we can see growth around this disk so if there is growth surrounding the growth surrounding the uh, disk 10 and disk xv that means the bacteria is requiring only factor 10 so there are certain bacteria which require only factor 10 that is the hemophilus that is the hemophilus ducre okay hemophilus ducre d4 ducre d4 thus so by that you can remember that hemophilus ducre requires only factor 10 there are some bacteria which require uh, which show growth around factor uh, disc of factor 5 and around the disc xv so that means the factor i mean the bacteria requires only factor 5 so the bacteria which require only factor 5 are the h hemophilus para influenzae and hemophilus para hemolyticus that means they are uh, how can you remember this you can remember this by para hiv para hiv means para in uh, para hemolyticus and para i mean uh, by para hiv you can remember para hemolyticus and para influenzae hemophilus para influenzae hemophilus para hemolyticus that require factor 5 so by that you can remember so this is pneumonia para hiv so para hiv requires factor 5 and then we have the growth surrounding only factor x and 10 disc that means the bacteria is requiring both the factors x and b so those that those bacteria are the h h influenzae and the h hemolyticus h influenzae and the h hemolyticus so d4 ducre d4 thus this para hiv for the factors uh, for the bacteria which require only factor 5 and this uh, influenzae on and the hemolyticus is requiring both the factors that is x and 5 now we have the some of the molecular methods that is pcr and the biofire film array by which you can correctly specifically and uh, you know correctly diagnose the or identify the strain of the bacteria or the species of the bacteria other than that we have the antimicrobial susceptibility testing by which we can get to know about the uh, the effective antibiotics which we can use to treat the patient so this is all about the lab diagnosis of the hemophilus influenzae bacteria causing pneumonia okay so that is all about this